And good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Union Catholic Livestream here for today's matchup with your Union Catholic Lady Vikings against the David Burley Bears. I'm 2016 alum Brandon Schuster, joined alongside by Ryan Florek on the board. We start off today's game with Val Capra, the shortstop. Showing bunt on the second pitch, pulls it back. That one's going to bounce. Count one and one. Shows bunt, pulls back that one again, missing. Two and one now. That one a called strike. Count now two and two to Capra. Pitching today is Reedy for the Vikings. That one's hit out into left field. That one's going to be a base hit. Rounding second. First is Capra. She's going to stand up with a double. A leadoff double to start the game for the Bears. Alrighty, so that's a leadoff double for the Bears. Lila Reed is going to have to make sure she doesn't have any pitches that go outside of the zone and back to the backstop. This one swung on and sent over to second base. Missing, sent out to right field. There's going to be a play at the plate. Not in time. Bears on the board. Starting the game off within the first two at-bats with a run. Scores one nothing. David Brearley. And that was Frankie Licata. With a single there. Up next for the Bears, Leah Sims. Shortstop. Excuse me. Yep, shortstop. Capra was the left fielder. And Lakata's in center. That one is swung on and popped up right over at second base. Right there is Parker for the Vikings. She'll make that play. That was the freshman, Sienna Parker. That one outside and dropped by the catcher, so Licata's going to take second base on that pass ball. Up now is Lily Colello. Colo, excuse me. That one is a strike. Count one and one now. That one high. That one swung on and sent deep to center field. That one's going to be overhead to the Vikings, and that one's going to be extra bases. One run will score. Quello's rounding second, heading to third, and that's a stand-up RBI triple. For Lily Quello. Up now is Jamie Lynn.
That one swung on and sent over to second base. Quick play there by Parker. Vikings have two outs now. 4-3, but the run will score. It's 3 nothing Bears. Here in the top of the first. Up now is Ella La Rosa, the first baseman for the Bears. That one is a strike. 0-1 now. That one swung on and also to second base. Parker, with enough time, makes the play. Three runs on three hits. That'll do it for the top of the first. We're going to go now to the bottom of the first. Vikings coming up to bat right after this. And we're back here in bottom of the first. Vikings looking to chip away at a 3-0 deficit they look at. Leading off for the Vikings is going to be Anaya Fleming. She's in center field. Batting second is going to be Jules Hart. She's going to be the shortstop today. First pitch is swung on and fouled. Ooh, and a diving play. And she came up with it. So a first pitch fly out for the Vikings here. Jules Hart coming up now. High for a ball. I'm joined now by Jack Ublanowicz. Jack, how you doing? I'm doing great. That one is called strike one and one to Hart. The 1-1. One, one. So I'm going to foul back. 1-2 and two now. It'll be a 1-2 to Hart. And swung on hard to third. Grabbed there. Fires. In time. So two quick outs here to start the game. Now up we have Hannah Buniak, the catcher. That one's going to be swung on and drilled down the left field line. That one is a foul ball. Jack, that one was hit hard. Yeah. That was a good pitch to swing at. Absolutely. Good plate vision there to identify that one early and square it up. The L1, high for a ball. The pitcher's done a good job making sure that the batters keep the ball on the ground. 
so far for the Vikings. But that was a good, even though the foul ball, she she really aired, put some air in that ball and kind of uh, hit it high. And because the pitcher has only made him pitch gra hit ground balls so far. That one looked like that one missed. 2-1 here. Swung on, fouled back. 2-2. Two and two. That one's hit on the ground to shortstop. Fired over to first. Oh, and over the first baseman's head. That one's going to be an extra base for Buniak. Vikings stay alive there on the throwing error. Good hustle there. I mean, the play is never really over. Some people would just walk the first, even if they thought they would have got out, but... If she walked the first, then she would, then it would, it would, she wouldn't have got the second. So, good job by her keeping running, even though it was probably a routine play, but they just airmailed it. Absolutely. That's why you always got to hustle. And we'll have Bella Donnelly up at the plate. The runner on second. That one missing low. That one was fouled back. One and one here. To Donnelly. She'll take the next pitch for a strike. Count now one and two. That one missing the zone. That one swung on down the first baseline. Picked up there. And that ends the inning. So the Vikings get a runner on base over in the scoring position at second base. They're able to not do anything with it. We're going to head to the second inning here. 3-0 Bears lead. We'll be right back. Alrighty, here we are in the top of the second. Leading off is Sofia Palmadesa. She's going to foul that one back. Bottom half of the order coming up for the Bears. Reedy gets her sign. Swung on, a 0-2. The 0-2. Got her looking. Strike three. 
good pitch got into account where, you know, she kind of had to surrender in those kind of terms. I got no two pitch count. Absolutely, Jack. It's a good pitch. That's what we like to call good morning, good afternoon, and good night. When you get in those O2 accounts, you have to hit everything that's near you. You kind of have to change, like, you know, where you hit the ball. Like, maybe if it's outside, you can take it, but I think you have to hit it anything that you kind of see. Oh, absolutely. In those two strike counts, you have to protect anything that looks like it could be there. You got to get the bat moving. You got to get the hands moving. You got to make sure that even if you don't put it in the play, you foul it off and stay alive as we see Amber Zawarki. In a 2-1 count now. That one high and in. Count is now full to the Bears' second baseman. The 3 2. Just missed. Ball four. Here is Brooklyn Stout. That one. Runner's going to go. No throw. It's a stolen base for Zawarki. Good steal there. I mean, the runner wasn't really, like, covering the first base, so she can go and run. And she read that perfectly. I don't know if it was a coaching, but she... She or an instinct, but she really did great on that steal. Absolutely, as we see a one-one count now to Val Capra as the lineup f switches over. Shows bunt pulls it back. Ball is low, two and one now. And we saw Capra do this in the first inning as well. Shows bunt pulls back and then waits for her pitch. That one's up behind the catcher into the backstop. And Stout advancing to third on that pass ball. It's not something you want to happen. That one up, and Capper is going to draw a walk. Snap throw. Trying to get a play there. Maybe get the runner to lean a little bit too far. Think the throw's actually going down to second as Capra advances. And you got a couple of options there. You can go down to third. You can go right back to the pitcher. You can throw it down to second, and that one's going to be bunted. And no play. Throw's too late. That one is going to score a run there. So we see Capper advance to second there. Run scores for the Bears on that last play. Frankie Licata is now up at the plate. She singled her first time around. Came around to score. 0 2 now to Capra. Or, excuse me, to Licata. 
Vikings have one out. That one swung on late in defense. Fouled off the other way down the first baseline. No play. One two here to Lakata. That one's grounded out to second to Parker. They're going to let the run come in. They want the out instead. So that'll be an RBI ground out for Lakata. Now as a hitter, you can either say, you know, that was a good hit or it depends on the hitter. Like a hitter could want that hit, you know, um, where uh, they sat, kind of do a sacrifice for themselves so they can get the, so they can get the runner home. Leah Sims hits a high fly ball, but right there is the Vikings' Sarah Potts. She'll make the play and end the inning. The Bears pick up a couple of runs here. We're going to go to the bottom of the second. Vikings looking to chip away again. Coming up next. And that one's going to be popped up and caught out there in right field by Paul Medessa. So Cam Kelly leads off the inning with a fly out. Leela Reedy coming up to plate, play, trying to help out her own cause. So it's 5 nothing Bears. And that one is swung on and missed 0-1. That one missing, ball one. That one swung on, hit hard to La Rosa. She'll make the play, though. Two quick outs to open up the inning here for the Vikings. Up next, Sarah Potts, the right fielder. Inside. That one misses as well, two and oh. That one finds the zone, two and one. Another one inside to Potts, three and one. That one swung on and missed. 
Count is now full. And that one is strike three. Potts goes down looking. So a one, two, three inning there for Licata. Bears quickly get through that. Heading to the top of the third now. Five nothing here in Union Catholic. Alrighty, and Lily Quello takes the first pitch for a strike. And that one grounded down to third. Donnelly over to Kelly. Gets the out. Up now the pitcher, Lakata, Chrissy, that one. Sent that in the right field. Right there is Sarah Potts. Routine play. Maybe only had to take about two, three steps. Records the out. Reedy now has two quick outs. The Vikings looking to get back up at the plate. That one missing the zone. 1-0 and to Jamie Lynn. That one grounded over the head of Reedy. Right there is Hart. That one's going to get away. That one's going to be an extra base. Jamie Lynn will take second base on that one. Ella La Rosa, the first baseman for the Bears, now up at the plate. That one swung on and fouled back. And that one low. That one swung on off. Reedy. Parker picks it up, and that one not in time. Good attempt there, but La Rosa reaches first base there. So the Bears now have runners on the corners. And Sophia Palmadesa coming up at the plate.
That one missing. If you're Reedy, you really just want to take a deep breath, find your zone, hit your mark, just like that. You got two outs. And that one low bouncing up into the turf, up into Booniak. Booniak picks it up. No throw as LaRosa is going to advance to second there. That one low again. 3 1. To the Bears right fielder. That one swung on, and they're going to call that one a foul ball, foul back. Full count, two outs, runners at second and third. That one low in the dirt. That one's going to be another walk. So the bases are now loaded for David Burley. Coming up to the plate is the second baseman, Amber Zawarki. We'll see Booniak come up and call timeout. Take a moment. Talk to Reedy. Jack, what do you think Booniak's talking to Reedy about right now? I mean, um, you had, like, the second inning was pretty good, but um, you did a great job in the second inning trying to close down the first inning. So I think you just need to take a breath, go back to the stuff that's working, go back to just having a catch with the catcher, give them pitches to hit. I don't think that, that uh, Dave Burley has showed enough that they can really hit hit like a pitch. They more have just stole second base or got like a little contact, but make them prove they can they can uh, hit, a, hit a deep ball and then work from there. That one's going to be a slow ground ball to Hart. The throw, not in time. Run will score. That was a good play there by Hart to get to it. And Zawarki was flying down that line. See the lineup switch over now, Val Capra. And that one's going to be swung on and hit out into the left center field gap. Coming on is Price. She'll make the play. So the Vikings escape a big jam that could have opened up the door to a bigger inning. They'll only give up one. It's now 6 nothing. Vikings coming up to bat. Back here with Price leading off for the Vikings. That one low in the dirt. So 8, 9, and 1 due up for the Vikings here in the bottom of the third. If you're just tuning in, it's a 6 nothing game. David Burley leads. That one's going to be right back up the middle for a base hit. Price takes a big turn, looks in because it looks like the turf. Sometimes a little unrelenting, Jack. The turf can keep the balls moving. It doesn't slow it down as quickly as grass does. We saw a nice reaction there by Lakata. 
to get to it, though, diving in front of it. Now up we have Sienna Parker. She shows bunt. That's going to be a steal. The throw is in time. Uh, looks like there may have been a bunt and run play going on there. Now, in moments like that, Jack, if it's a hit and run or a bunt and run, if that's what it was, it's your job as the hitter to protect that runner. You got to make contact in any kind of way. And that one's going to be another bunt attempt. That one going to go foul back. Well, do you think it was a fake bunt, or do you think that she actually, like, missed on that? I think it could have been a fake bunt, you know, um, for them to make make the pitcher throw the ball while the, while the uh, first baseman would just sneak behind and, and run. I mean, it's possible that there are multiple different plays that could go about that, as that one's going to be strike two. You could have, you know, a bunt and run situation on where the runner runs and the batter bunts. That one is swung on and hit down the right field line. Foul ball. We'll do it again here, one and two. So if you do a bunt and run, Jack, the bunt and run is similar to a hit and run, except instead of the hit, you bunt. But your job as the batter is to make sure that you get contact on that, is to protect the runner. It could have been a fake and a steal anyway, which at that point you still pull back. But it's hard to tell from up here. This is where Union Catholic needs a big hit. I feel like they've hit it on the ground a lot, which is good. I mean, if it gets past when they make a, make a throw that they did in like the first or second inning, then you like that. But I think they should try to go more. Let's get let's get this one hit that's deep and drops in like the outfield that will get the that will get the team going and that will get runs to score. Absolutely, is that one's going to be swung on hit on the ground right back to Lakata on the first? The Vikings have. Two outs here in the bottom of the third. Lineup card flips back over for the Vikings. Up now is Anaya Fleming, the center fielder. That one is outside, ball. The pitch. Swung on, foul back, one and one. The one, one. Outside, two and one. That one's going to be swung on and hit into the shallow depth out there in the center field. That one's going to drop in for a base hit for Anaya Fleming. Vikings get the second hit of the, the inning here. That was the hit I was talking about. Make these outfielders, outfielders work for, for the Bears. I mean, they really haven't had a lot of work. It's been more the infielders. So make them work. Make them go for a ball and see if they can make that drop. Absolutely, as we'll see Jules Hart come up. Takes first pitch for a strike. In the 0-1. That one's going to be swung on into left field. That one is a foul ball. Jules Hart here. 0-2 count. The pitch. Swung on into center field. Right there is Lakata. She'll make the play to end the inning. So the Vikings get two hits, leave one on because of the caught stealing. No runs. We're going to go to the top of the fourth here. Bears lead 6-0.
And we're back here in the top of the fourth. Is that one's going to be called strike to Frankie Licata. Count one and one here. That one high. Two and one. Three one to Lakata is high ball four. So a walk to Lakata brings up Leah Sims. Called strike one. Sims today, 0 for 2. Fly out to Parker and a fly out to Potts. So far, the only bear not to reach base today for David Burley. And that one's going to be swung on and sent deep in the center field. That one's going to be extra bases. Lakata rounds third. She'll score. Sims rounds third. She's coming home. And that's an inside the park home run for Leah Sims. That's two runs there. Inside the park home runs are super rare. Not here. Well, with a with a field like Union Catholic and the size of the, of the dimensions here, with the complex, it is very often that most of the home runs here are inside the park home runs. I have seen that a couple times. Yes, I have. There was one game where 2014 alum T.J. Hartnett hit one into almost, if not into the parking lot, over the what would be the left field foul pole for the baseball dimensions on the other side of the turf. So Lily Coelho comes up now. It's now 8 nothing. That one just missing the zone. That one's going to be swung on and fouled down the third baseline. One one is right there. One and two now. That one low, two and two. Two, two count now. That one's going to be swung on out to center field. Up and over the head of Fleming. That one's going to roll past midcourt or midfield for the soccer field here on the turf. Rounding third, heading home. The cutoff play is not in time. Back to back home runs. Lily Quello now touches them all. Now 9 0. David Brearley. That one's a tough play, Jack, in the air. I think once he gets um, past that kind of like midfield line, it's like the line. You can still get him out, like technically, but it's like it's really difficult when it gets to there. And that one, Chrissy Licata up the middle off of Reedy. 
plane not in time, unfortunately. That's a single there. Coming up now, Jamie Lynn. The mayor stole. Mayor stole second. Yep. It's a bang bang play. I think it's really hard to see up here. It could have been out or safe, but excuse uh, me, that was Jamie Lynn that stole second. She's the designated player for the pitcher. So up now is Ella La Rosa, the first baseman for David Burley. One is grounded back up the middle, Hart onto first in time. That one called for a strike. That one fouled back. And one, two now. That one missing, two and two. That one caught by Hart. That one will end the inning. So after two home runs, the Bears pick up three. It's nine nothing here as we head to the bottom of the fourth.
and we're back as Jules Hart takes the first pitch for a ball. It's 1-0. and Here on the bottom of the fourth, if you're just tuning in, it's 9 nothing. David Rarely. His heart's going to send a high fly ball out to right field. Palma Dess is there. Up to one fly out. Up now is Hannah Remack. Union Catholic has done a better job through these innings, hitting the ball higher and, and, and farther into the park. And that one's going to hit Booniac, so she'll take first base. I'm going to run around now. The first few innings, Union Catholic just kept, felt like they kept, like, round the ball, and now they've done a better job kind of lifting it um, and putting it into the uh, into farther territory where the uh, outfielders can make a play. And, cr and credit uh, uh, Dave Burley's outfielders are making good plays, but I like the hits that Union Catholic's putting on. Um, other than just grounding it out and having an easy play. Absolutely, Jack. Well said. So we see Bella Donnelly here fouling off her first pitch. The second one is going to be outside for a ball. One and one here. Donnelly's first at bat. She grounded out to third, or excuse me, to the first baseman. And that one, good frame job there by the catcher, but the umpire saw where the ball crossed the zone, and that one is a ball. First time I've been able to actually see the framing. That one's going to be caught there over by third by Coelho. They'll only have enough time for one. So Booniak is thrown out advancing the second. Donnelly reaches first on a fielder's choice. Vikings have two outs. Cameron Kelly up at the plate. Kelly's last at bat, she hit a fly out to right. Two and oh now to Kelly. That one's going to be swung on and through the infield hole. That's going to be a base hit. So Kelly gets a single. Runners now first and second. Donnelly the runner at second. One swing here and Union Catholic can get on the board. We'll see what Lila Reedy can do. That one's going to be swung on over to short. Picked up by Sims onto first in time for the out. So the Vikings were able to pick up two runners in that inning. Three if you count Booniak. Fortunately, they were unable to not do much with them. We're going to head now to the top of the fifth here at Union Catholic.
And we're back here in the top of the fifth. Zawarki leading off for the Bears. That one called strike. That one slapped over to short. Diving play. Not able to come up with it. It's a base hit for Zawarki. Good also there. That could have been that could have been a lot worse if that went past her, especially with the turf you, you talked about earlier and the turf and how it's just unrelenting. She did a good job getting in front of that bat. Absolutely. From that baseball. Runner goes. Fire by Booniak. Got her. What a throw by Booniak. Union Catholic was ready for that one. It was a good job because the last few times they just let like a, it was like a it was like a free free ticket to, to second base sometimes. So they Union Catholic did a great job adjusting. Absolutely. Occasionally not one you throw down with the runner at third. They don't want to keep the they don't want to accidentally overthrow, have the runner score, get into a different position like that. Great job there by Booniak to throw out that runner. I think when you say overthrowing, you just got to trust your capture there. Um, you know, your capture can make those type of throws. 3-0 count here. That one a called strike. I think when you're when you're down, you kind of don't want to get into these... You want to try to stay ahead in the count if you're a pitcher, especially when you're down, because um, one hit and, and now it's more important for it than, than, than if no one was on base, of course. Absolutely, as we see Frankie Licata swing on, sends that one over to second. Play is not in time. Leah Sims back up at the plate. Sims, of course, remember last inning, had that two-run home run. We see the outfielders for Union Catholic taking a couple steps back just in case that ball takes a ride again. That one's going to be over the head of the infielders into left field. One run will score. It's an RBI single for Leah Sims. Capra comes around to score. I think she picked the right spot. She didn't have to go for the home run again. It wasn't, I mean, I mean it would, you would love to get two home runs in a row. It would be fun. It would be fun to go, go home to talk about it. But I feel like it was a very, very good hit. Um, found the right place of the, of the outfield. It wasn't fancy. But she had you an RBI and, and, and it's... And it's and it's also very important the coach will love that, that you were able to pick and you were able to try the ball where the, uh, where the Union Catholic Vikings weren't. Absolutely. And Lily Coelho now. She also hit a home run last inning, and that one's going to be right to second base there for Parker. Vikings now two outs. Swung on and fouled back. That 
That one a called strike, one and two now. Two two. Oop, behind Buniak, runners will go and they'll get. Each have the ability to move up now. Runners now. Second and third that negates any force on any base in the infield. Now plays have to be made at first if that ball sit on the ground. Yeah, good double steal. Very good communication. That shows that the Bears have a very good team communication. That one's gonna be ripped into the outfield and that one's gonna keep rolling all the way on the baseball field and that one is going to be an easy three run home run for Jamie Lynn. Wow Jack, that one, that one took off and got out of here in a hurry. That one just kept rolling and rolling and rolling. Yeah, as I said, you hit them where they where they're not. They're definitely not going to be in the uh, in the in the in the in the boys' baseball. Was was surprised they weren't practicing there, which I mean it wouldn't make sense. But you know, hit them where they ain't. It, they weren't in the baseball field. The other it was a good hit. It's a three-run home run there. That one swung on and foul back. It's Ella La Rosa. Rosa swings at that one and misses. Good, good job, I think. I think that um, that that the home run could be uh, could be a little bit not not this might sound weird, but a little bit beneficial to pitcher to have like to have like their mindset be like, okay, there's no one in the base, we got a clean slate, let's go attack this hitter, let's just think about this hitter, because there's a lot to think about when bases when there's whether when there's uh. When there's girls on bases, so there's a lot to think about. So yes. now she can just think about let's throw this, let's throw a strike. That one on the ground to Hart. Hart fires across in time, and the inning is over. After the three run home run, the Bears pick up four runs this inning. We're going to head to the bottom of the fifth here in just a moment. Alrighty, here we go. Bottom of the fist. 
Potts, Price, and Parker do up for the Vikings. That one inside, ball one. Vikings down 13. Pods takes that one. One and one. That one called strike two. Pods now one and two count. Trying to get something going here for the Vikings. This time is starting to run out. That one swung on and missed. Strike three. So one out to open up the bottom of the fifth. Coming in now is Catherine Price, left fielder. Now on a call strike. That one missing the zone, one and one. Now one right there in the zone, one and two now. Swung on and missed, strike three. Two outs here for the Vikings. Sienna Parker up. That one goes to swing, stops. Looks like that one was called outside for a ball. So it should be a 1 0 count to Sienna Parker. That one outside, 2 and 0. That one inside for a strike, 2 and 1. To Sienna Parker. That one outside, 3 1 now. Foul back. Count is now full. That one misses ball four. Sienna Parker draws a walk. That'll bring up Anaya Fleming, top of the lineup now for the Vikings. Parker swings and hits one up the first baseline. That one is a foul ball. The other one taken for a ball, one and one. And one one, swung on and missed. Just a little late there on that swing. One and two count now to Anaya Fleming. And a called strike three. And that'll do it. So in five innings, the David Brearley Bears defeat the Union Catholic Vikings 13 to nothing. 
Hey Jack, it's still early out in the season. You're still learning everybody's chemistry. You're still, you know, working out some of the things that you need to work out as a team. So, you know, we take it by progress. We got a couple of hits here. We were moving runners around. There were great plays in the field. So all in all, although it's a loss, there are some things to take away from here that we can say are that'll keep us moving in a positive direction. There are things that we learned from this game that I'm sure Coach Bonides would agree on that'll help us out as we go on. Yes, I mean, you can look at the score. You'd be like, oh, this was a bad thought. But I feel like they learned, through, they, they adapted, and they adjusted. And I think the, the, the ability to adjust was very good for Union Catholic. They, they, they were hitting, you know, soft line drive, and they, and they started to turn the ball. And even though, you know, they uh the bear shot uh they played great the the the, the um the the outfielders played great they were able to catch a single ball that was hit but i feel like you play other teams that ball is going to drop and you know you can't really wait for that but i feel like those balls are going to drop um in in the next few games that's going to be um something that you and Catholic can can uh, look forward to yep absolutely so once again David Burley Bears are victorious here against Union Catholic, 13 to nothing. That'll do it here for everything today. For Ryan Florick, for Jackie Blonowitz, I'm Brandon Schuster. Have a good night.